Which one is which? Which is the one who handles life? <laughs> Interesting. We got a little battle today. Fuji G9 versus the Panasonic X-T4. Not gonna look at either of them. I know I reversed those. It's on purpose. I got a bunch of little tests today. I brought a bunch of lenses as well. Who will use or error their way to our hearts tonight, this day? All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So is it obvious already? Just looking at the colors, the exposure, stabilization. Oh, those are some steps. <laughs> Fuji's on your left. Panasonic on your right. I'm in Cine V on the Panasonic. I tried to match them just by eye, so we're not gonna color grade. They look fairly close. Fuji looks a little darker blue in the sky. Interesting, and since we can't, what the hell was that, Fuji? It switched to a face box instead of eyes. How dare you? As Fuji rests in the grass, I did have this at minus something EV, which I didn't do on the Fuji, but I find you have to on the Panasonic. Now we're at nothing, no exposure compensation. Let's see how it handles the sun and then we'll decide on whether we leave it there. Okay. So maybe I will leave it there. Zero comp allowed. So Panasonic G9 with the Leica 15 mil 21.7. I figure that will be very similar to the Fuji 18 mil 22. Depth of field wise, it's a little wider. If we're at the same exact length, yeah, Fuji is wider, so we'd have to do something like that awkwardly. All right, let's do a little stabilization test. Just IBIS on the Panasonic here. We'll walk back and forth. We'll see backlit in situations. Sun's behind me, but I still look pretty exposed. The sky lost its blue. We're on another planet, but still. And is the autofocus tracking me? Oh my God, right now. It's not a great lens for this. But this is the fairest comparison I have. And we're back. You know, I realize it's too ass sunny. I'm the problem. I'm asking cameras to compete in this kind of situation, just dead the heat of the sun. And then I go into dark shade. There's an old man. There's an old man. He's in the distance. He's Tone. So let's switch to the Fuji. See who handles just Ibis better. First we get a shade compensation technique. Wow, that was smooth. Okay, I'm gonna use the same arm for the Fuji. So we're doing the same old walk. How's the just Ibis? Yes, we're on the newest firmware, 1.02. Just downloaded it last night. Is it better? That's why I brought the 10 to 24 to see is it now improved? Is that the ultimate lens? And we will compare it to the Leica 8 to 18 for a warpy shit battle of the century. How's the autofocus? Is it keeping me back litten? Who exposed better? That is smooth. I mean, it might be stepping, but it's fast. So smooth wasn't the word. I don't know English. That's not a problem. Fuji does expose for the skin very well, for the skin of the face. You know what I mean? Is the old man still there? He is. He's oblivious to my stupidity. <laughs> and we're about to hit the shade. Who compensates better? 
Oh my God, right now. So I imagine Panasonic was smoother, but Fuji does have digital stabe, which is better than the Panasonic. So I don't think we should even try putting the digital on the Panasonic. It's already perfect. So let's do digital versus non-digital and see if Fuji can make up with electronic engineering. All right, now the crop is tighter. Now it's similar. So now the lenses are exact. We're just walking. We are walking our way through life. Who's handling it better? Who dreams to be in our beds at night? I'll tell you, I'm struggling with this Fuji. It just loses me so much. This is the best lens. It actually doesn't sometimes. <laughs> like I'm debating sending it back. I can't believe it. It's the perfect camera on paper. The Eterna profile is kind of faded and looking weird. I thought it was the best thing ever until I used other stuff. <laughs> Panasonic Vlog. If I had Vlog on this, wow, can we even imagine it? I can't. If I'm just looking at these shots on the screen, the Panasonic shadows are much brighter. Fuji looks more natural though. Panasonic has a strange shadow brightening technique and I don't have the eye dynamic range feature on anymore. I stopped using that. It's weird. So let's do a little autofocus test. Okay, now it's time for a warpy shit test. We're on the Panasonic with the Leica 8 to 18. And I also want to test the audio preamps. So we're in the Panasonic alone. Pay attention to the warpy shit. And then we will switch to the Fuji in here if the preamps are worse. And we got the 10 to 24 over there to see, did Fuji actually improve their IBIS? Because I notice Olympus makes this lens okay with the digital. We'll try digital. Okay, digital stabe is on. We already know it doesn't fix the warpy shit. We wish it did, but it doesn't. You gotta zoom into like 95 mils and then it disappears. I find 15 is perfect. 12 is still okay. It floats. Even same with Fuji. The 18 mils, very smooth with just IBIS, unless it wasn't and I dreamed it. I'll put the Fuji side by side on the walk back. Or will I? <laughs> you can't really see them when they're cropped. You can't see the warpy stuff. You crop out the warpy stuff looking for warpy stuff. Kind of makes the test obsolete. All right, now we're on the Fuji. Pay attention to the audio. Does it sound better? Does my voice tremble in fear now? Is there more hissy stuff in the background? And is there warpy stuff? Have they fixed it? We're on the new firmware. 10 to 24 at 10 mils. No digital yet. How are we doing on it? Okay, we're on digital. It should be good. This should be good. We've got digital and IBIS and lens stabe. That's an advantage over the Panasonic. That lens is not stabilized. We got three systems working most likely against each other, unfortunately. Come on, just be the one. Fuji, ah, oh, the system. The lenses disappoint you at every turn for video. There's nothing on the horizon for us, only long glass for antelopes and shit in the Sahara. Is that a macaque? 
I think it's a macaque. All right, just a brief comparison of image quality with the super wides, Panasonic, both on digital, just for the heck of it. Does any look superior? Oh my God, the zebras. Oh wow, the adjustments have been made. They are fun. They're fun lenses. They're both heavy. Honestly, I think the Panasonic's heavier. What the hell was that? Maybe don't ride a dirt bike on the highway. Asshole. All right, last test I wanna do. I brought both the kit lenses. They're not kit lenses. The 2.8 to four zooms, both stabilized. I'm curious. I am curious. Oh my God, a woodpecker. I haven't switched to the zoom yet. Oh, I only have 24 mils on the long end. No. Will you wait for me to switch the zoom? Yes, you will. Thank you. Okay, here we are on both lenses at their widest. How close can we get to that very patient bird? There's the Fuji. Oh, wow. Oh, the Panasonic. Are you tracking him? I don't see an animal detect box around him. That's kind of bullshit, Panasonic. I expected more from you. But that's interesting to see how much zoom we got. 60 on the penny, 55 on the Fuji, but we all know the crop factors are very mathematical in their persuasions. The Fuji autofocus system of life is really having a struggle, isn't it? Uh, what if I tap on the bird? There, I tapped on it. How about Panasonic? What if I tap on that bird? That just sets it and locks it. Oh boy. All right, which one is more cinematic? They're very different lenses. It's like a 24 to 120 for the Panasonic, and the Fuji's like a 27 to 85. They're both 2.8 to 4, but that's different. So it's slight advantage Fuji. It does look a little more cinematic, doesn't it? Even though they're both 2.8 right now, because we're wider, which we don't have to be. There, that's roughly the same focal length. I, vo <laughs> I voomed in. <laughs> I zoomed to like 15 maybe. And we're at now at 23. That's bullshit. But this is what you can expect. Both have dual stave. I don't know if Fuji markets it as that, but it's lens and IBIS. No digital, I think, unless it's still on. I'm a rookie. <laughs> oh, digital was on. That was supposed to be next. So if Fuji was somehow smoother, wow. We'll test them separately. Right now, no digital on the Fuji. Is it stable? It should be. This is the best combo. Stabilized lens plus IBIS and a firmware update. That is fantastic. You can't be worse than the Panasonic. I won't allow it versus the Panasonic with their dual stabe. It's just floaty goodness. Like I rented a boat for this. I'm on a boat. It is glorious. It looks different. I should have walked the same in the same sunshine with the same hand, but I didn't. I didn't do it. And now with digital on the Fuji, I just recorded this. I didn't have the lav mic plugged in. I'm a, such a noob. So, and then we'll finish the video off on this. And pay attention to that autofocus. Losing my ass. Whenever I turn, I don't even have to turn. Just jumps, it sees faces in the trees or something. I wonder if I can see that box jump on a tree. It did something there. I think it just switched to face. Can't see my eyes. It's like you're not allowed to wear a hat if you have Fuji. That's bullshit Fuji. I tell you, Fuji's not the system for video that you thought it was. In full manual control, you probably get the best looking image you've ever seen. F-log, manual focus the lens, 
lock the exposure yeah in that situation but me i just want to like go somewhere and vlog my trip and go in the shade and have the thing just do its stuff auto exposure handle this handle the wackiness fuji handle it just do it it's a lot to ask but sony and canon seem to do it pretty well so who do you thunk <laughs> won the battle today fuji or penny boy i'll tell you that penny boy i bet you dynamic range wise fuji beats it if it beat the eos r it's gonna beat the penny boy it beat the olympus so fuji special i'm waiting for that kaizen update on the autofocus that just has it lock on you and when it does lose you it goes to head or body it stays here like sony does we need that so bad what is that oh my god where is it oh god it's like a warship okay one last little test of dynamic range we're both at 24 iso 200 on each and 2000 shutter now let's bring back some clouds i mean oh god disappear the clouds oh that's not english all right, 1250 on the Fuji, 1300 on the Penny. I'm seeing some zebras in the clouds on the Penny, but only on whatever that is on the Fuji. And my face looks a little brighter on the Penny. All right, ISO 800 for both. Who is doing it? Who is exposing for my face and the sky? The same or less. Fuji's looking better in that sky. Here's 500 ISO for both pure zebras on the panty boy just maybe a little here is no zebra area on the fuji only the white clouds are zebraed they're both at 95 percent zebra for anybody who wants to visit the safari and now we're 320 for both i would say this is somewhat acceptable face exposure now and penny has lost the sky fuji still has nice colors in those trees oh boy the Fuji dynamic range can't be beat. So let me know who won the battle today. We're on the Fuji. I just, I love these kind of videos for my other channel. Just chilling in nature, grounded to the earth. And just let's talk. Let's talk in nature. And Fuji just can't seem to do it. The autofocus just jumping so distracting. So please Fuji, Kaizen firmware, update us. Give us Sony autofocus and we're good to go. And I won't send this thing back to the shop. So let me know down below who won. And thank you for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt or a toenail shirt. <laughs> Subscribe for more videos. I'm going to see you in the next one.